Hello, my name is Vajraha and today I'm going to go over neurofibromatosis. Now I've had a look online and I found that most resources are in too much detail or not enough detail. So today what I'm going to do is I just go over everything that you really need to know in case you see a patient with this condition or you have a question in your exams. So let's get started. Neurofibromatosis is a genetic condition causing a variety of different tumours to grow in different places and sometimes it can take quite a few years for, for, you, for anyone to get any symptoms from these tumours but they often come in children or young adults. Now there's two types, type 1 and 2 and I'll go into both of them shortly. Both of them are what we call neurocutaneous so this is type 1 and type 2 and what, what neurocutaneous means is that it can affect the central nervous system the brain and spinal cord, and organs, skin and bone. Now they're both inherited in an autosomal dominant way and they're both um, caused by mutations in certain tumour suppressor genes uh, that result in this condition. So let's go on, let's go over type 1 first. Now if you look at these, this picture uh, you can see these brown pigmented patches and these are called cafe au lait spots. Now they usually develop quite early on in life uh, so by the age of three people will commonly have five or six of these patches um, but what's important to know is that the number of these patches um, doesn't relate to the severity of the disease. Someone could have a hundred of them it doesn't mean that uh, their condition is more severe. They also get freckles and these are usually um, in quite unusual places like the armpit, the groin or under the breast. And they can get these things called neurofibromas which are tumours of the nerve sheath cells. And they don't particularly look pleasant but they're not painful. They are benign tumours um, and they're usually found in late teens. Quite different to cafe au lait spots which comes quite early on in life. Um, what's important to know as well with these is that they don't undergo any malignant change, they're, they're completely benign. So they're the uh, skin uh, presentation so we get. Moving on to the eye, we get these things called leash nodules and these are pigmented um, what we call hematomas and what that is is a mixture of normal tissue and cells clumping together. If you look at this picture you can see these brown, this brown area around the iris and then they are leash nodules. They don't cause any particular symptoms or any visual change either. What does cause visual problems is these optic gliomas. So these are optic nerve tumours and they can cause blurred vision, changes in colour vision or even reduce visual fields. We also get um, pheochromocytomas, adrenal gland tumours and lastly developmental problems. Now these developmental problems can be like scoliosis, um, larger head size and smaller height but we can also get some cognitive problems like low IQ, autism and ADHD. Now that's quite a lot to remember, quite a, lot, quite a number of different tumours but I have come up with a way for you guys to remember. Now if I look at these cafe au lait spots, I always just think about coffee and that's because cafe au lait in French means coffee with milk. So when I drink coffee as well I try to go for decaf coffee um, to try and reduce my caffeine intake. That's the mnemonic I've come up with today. D stands for developmental problems, eye involvement, cafe au lait spots, adrenal tumour, freckles and fibromas. So if you just remember that, try and associate the coffee and the cafe au lait spots with neurofibromatosis type 1. And if you remember that, you should be sorted. Let's move on to type 2, and this is a lot easier to remember. Now with type 2, the most common type of tumour that we see are these bilateral acoustic schwannomas or acoustic neuromas. And these are uh, tumours that can uh, compress... Uh, one of the cranial nerves, cranial nerve 8. Now we know that cranial nerve 8 is involved in balance in hearing so often this can present with hearing loss or balance problems. 
Um, we can also get cataract, which is a clouding of the of the lens. We can get meningiomas, and they are tumors of the the cover of the brain and spinal cord, the meninges. We can get ependymomas, which are tumors of the cells that make central uh, cerebrospinal fluid (CSF). Sorry, and if we get if we get too much of this CSF, it can cause raised intracranial pressure. So if you see a patient that has this condition that comes in with symptoms of blurred vision or headaches, you need to be very careful because that could be uh, raised intracranial pressure. Now, as always, again, I've come up with a way for you guys to remember this. This is a lot more simple and straightforward. So we know that this is neurofibromatosis type two. So I've got two ears, two eyes, and two parts of the brain. So two ears because this is a bilateral acoustic neuroma, two eyes because cataract affects both eyes, and two parts of the brain, the meningiomas and the ependymomas. So if you remember that, two ears, two eyes, two parts of the brain, you should get that sorted. And that's type 1 and type 2 in a nutshell. Investigation wise, what can we do? Usually uh, MRI or CT. There are some other things that we usually do as well. So a yearly eye test to look for any of these optic tumors that I mentioned earlier. And we do regular blood pressure checks because adrenal tumors can uh, cause high blood pressure. Unfortunately, uh, there isn't any cure to this. But we usually do surgery, uh, chemotherapy or radiation. Um, surgery wise, we can uh, help with the neurofibromas we can get the plastic surgeons involved and uh, they can do quite a good job with that complications there are some that we do need to be aware of so the main one is this malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor and they occur in around 15 percent of people with neurofibromatosis and they predominantly occur in quite young people who age 20 to 35 Unfortunately though, these um, cancers are quite hard to detect um, and they metastasize quite widely so they spread um, and that means that they often have quite a poor prognosis. Um, I have included uh, some symptoms though that uh, patients or doctors should look out for uh, that may indicate a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. So if you just pause the video and uh, have a read of these symptoms uh, that can be quite helpful as well as that uh, we have an increased risk of breast cancer as well so lastly um, here's a question an 18 year old male presents to his GP due to troubling hearing problems he says he has recently been struggling to hear things around him he also complains that he suffers from tinnitus and dizziness on occasion on examination you notice Renee's test is positive in both ears Air conduction is better than bone conduction. Weber's test localizes centrally. The patient has several cafe au lait spots on his body. What is the most underlying diagnosis? So let's break this question up. We've got an 18 year old male, quite a young man, and he's got hearing problems and he's been struggling to hear things. He complains that he's got tinnitus and dizziness. And we notice that Rene's test is positive in both ears. So air conduction is better than bone conduction. Weber's test is localized centrally. So Rene's test positive in both ears that could indicate um, sensory neural hearing loss and Weber's test localized centrally. And like I mentioned earlier on, the most common type of tumor that you get in neurofibromatosis type two are these acoustic neuromas. Now acoustic neuromas will usually localize centrally because they're bilateral in neurofibromatosis. Uh, and you get neuro, uh, sensory neural hearing loss, which is why the Rene's test is positive in both ears. He has hearing problems. He's a young man. He's got cafe au lait spots. I forgot to mention that you can also get this in type 2. I mentioned earlier that you get it in type 1. But because of the uh, bilateral acoustic neuroma, we know that this is definitely neurofibromatosis type 2. So that's the end. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Please uh, give me a like, comment, subscribe as well. Uh, tell me if there's any particular topics you want me to go over. 
and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.